Hello. Hey, everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on your hope uh, that everything is going your way. If not, just know if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. So much happens uh, that things can go in a different direction just like that. So don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. Don't ever turn turn away. Don't ever fold. Uh, a lot of what I've been able to do in this life has been solely because I refuse to quit uh, at a time that most people would. But look, I'm not going to be long. Uh, there's a lot going on. And I just want to uh, talk to you about something that's sort of weighing heavily on my mind right now. And I've talked about it a little bit before, but you know, I'm pretty sure by now everybody's heard about the young mother who um, the young mother who committed suicide, the mother of two who committed suicide. I think she was only 21 years old. Um, and I kind of talked about it. I talked about the need for people to focus on mental health. I think her name was Olivia Popman. Uh, anyway, Pop, Pop uh, Anyway, what I want to talk about today is a lot of people have contacted me to talk about how callous people are and how everybody's dragging her name and how everybody's attacking her and talking about how selfish she is and how stupid she is and and so many other things and look I'm not gonna be long but I do want to sort of try to bring a point home uh, a man I have a lot of respect for Jason Wilson who does a great deal of work with men and boys uh, has wrote and stated that when a man tells you he's tired, uh, believe him. And I will tell you that when a woman tells you she's overwhelmed, believe her. There's so much that happens in this society where we tend to see uh, people in a very insensitive way and in an insensitive light and it doesn't take into consideration the reality of where they're at and what they're going through. We tend to view people through the lens we're looking through at the time. Many of us have never experienced the gravity and the weight of the situation that they are currently going through. And definitely, uh, probably not through the lens that they are viewing it through. Uh, I'm saying all that to say this. Women go through a great deal just having kids, giving birth. Then there's this process where the home body's trying to readjust and reestablish its hormones. And when that happens, women uh, go through a process called postpartum depression. It's depression brought on by having a child in the body reacclimating to normal hormone levels that they have not experienced in 40 weeks. Well, anyway, that impacts different people in different ways. Then you tack on all of the other things that are happen happening simultaneously. Uh, trying to make sure that you're doing everything you can for your children, trying to make sure that you are doing everything you can for your mate. And then uh, you can exacerbate that a great deal if you sit up and say, okay, the mate is no longer actively involved. So now you're trying to carry the weight of parenting in the home, being a provider and breadwinner dealing with all the challenges of doing it. And then, let's say you're exacerbated a little more. Um, no help. No family help. Nobody's chipping in. Everybody's response to is, you brought that on yourself. Everybody's response is, nobody told you to go out and have no kids. That's the response. Okay. Uh, from an adult perspective, from... A, a perspective of sheer responsibility, it is your responsibility to rear your kids. Nobody else is. Nobody owes you anything. 
but the true nature of parenting is that it's so much easier when there's a village. It's so much easier when there's help. It's so much easier when someone can say, hey, look, I got the kids, take a break. When there is no room for a break, when there is constant stress, something gives. And so people want to say evil and a bunch of other things. And like I said, I live in Houston, so I've seen my share of extreme cases of postpartum depression. I've seen my share of extreme cases of mothers just being overwhelmed and becoming depressed, even when it would not necessarily qualify as um, um, postpartum depression. I live in Houston, like I said. So we saw Andrea Yates literally drown all five of her kids in a bathtub. Husband knew she had been struggling with depression. She had been diagnosed with depression, but he didn't take it serious enough to think that she would do something that devastating. Didn't take it serious. Uh, didn't think that that was possible. And of course, everybody that's saying it, first thing out of their mouths is she's absolutely evil. She did a very evil thing. And I wasn't there to be a part of observing her up close to sit up and say what it really was. What I could tell you is there are mothers who have driven their kids into the ocean, driven them and thrown them off bridges. And in their mind at that time, they've had a psychotic break and what they're doing makes sense. They're literally saving the children in their minds because they've had a psychotic break. When you break away from reality, you don't get to choose the reality you end up in. When you have a break from what is the norm, what is the social norm, what is the accepted standard in society that everybody lives by, when you have a break with that, you don't get to choose how your mind creates the new reality. And so it's immensely important to understand when a woman is saying, hey, look, I can't take it. Step in, find her some help, get her some help, be some help. Uh, this isn't me making an excuse, but I can tell you that taking your life is not a rational action. It's not something that you come to a conclusion in in a rational state there's something outside of reason that happens when someone gets to the point where they don't see any way to make things happen so with that being said my thing is go easy Go easy because, yeah, she left two kids. And from all I can understand, without anybody that has been consistently in their lives, that again to me doesn't make rational sense. But from what I could read from her posts, and I, I went pretty deep, from what I can read from her posts, she's been crying out for help. A lot of people were saying she's just attention whoring. She's just, you know, looking for attention. Just like Brother Whit what Jason Wilson said, when a man tells you he's tired, believe him. There's a thing that we men go through. That if you're not out here living this life and you're not a man, you're not going to understand. You're going to look at men and say, hey, man, that's a man. He got it. Nine times out of ten, we're going to tell you we got it. But it, it, it's winding tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And if there's not a way to unwind, if there's not a way to decompress, if there's not a way to rejuvenate and replenish, at some point we pop. And when we pop, again, we don't get to decide how that plays out. If 
we don't have the, the right type of work, the right type of coping mechanisms, the right type of ways to unplug, all the things we need to allow us to live this life in the way that it comes at us. It's a different situation for women, but it's the same severity. You can't keep ignoring what women are telling you and not expect horrible things like this to happen. On that note, I'm going to get out of here.